Other dear ones, it's Alice. I'm off the stars. Very happy holiday season to everyone. And I'm going to attempt, as we're at the beginning of the new year, to facilitate a clearing process um, for like a, a knot of energy that has been coming up lately. Uh, rather sensationalistic, um, acting out experience that's been happening. Um, uh, there have been two skits performed in my presence. Uh, one a few years ago at, on the grounds of a Christian religious retreat center. I was the only person to observe the performance. So at the time, I, I thought it might have to do with me. I was there for uh, a get-together to discuss sacred scripture. Um, I was the first person to arrive. I was, and in the seat that I usually sat at, at that place outdoors, was sitting uh, a trans person. Uh, in a very sexual outfit with zebra spandex and stiletto heels and so forth. Um, just very, very sexual in, in demeanor. And next to the trans person was what I've come to term a chaperone, which was <clears throat> an older woman, uh, much shorter, maybe maybe a foot and a half, or more shorter than the trans person who's sitting there very meekly, very um, fragile looking person who apparently was the person to protect the trans person from being raped, I'm guessing. And leaving off on the side was what seemed to be a, a, a movie personality who may have been like putting together the skit. So there were three people. And uh, this person got up from the seat, the trans person got up from the seat and sauntered past me in the direction of the director over there along with the trans person's chaperone. Um, the feeling that I got from the trans person was one of uh, extreme danger to me, physical danger, uh, a feeling of hatred welling up and, and exuding outward towards me uh, as if a physical attack were planned for me. And that was some years ago. And I wouldn't bring it up to you again now if it weren't for the fact that the same tableau has come up again. Um, it was only a while ago, maybe a month ago, I was in church. Oh, well, okay. I was going from the parking lot of the church across the grounds of the church towards the church and I noticed a trans person. It was it was uh, right before the service and it was very uh, evident that the trans person was there because their garb was 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 stood out so much. They were wearing, I think I've mentioned this, they were wearing uh, hip boots with heels but not stiletto heels, more like comfortable walking heels. It, uh, they were wearing um, a tube dress that ended just at the bottom of their torso, so it exposed a length of, of leg from the bottom of their torso to the beginning of the hip boot. And so the look was, was very sexual, very, um, very unusual. It, it attracted attention. Uh, then I went into the church, past the people, and I sat down, and, the, and, and as the people filed in, this trans person sat down directly in front of me, near the back of the church. And next to the trans person was sitting another chaperone. Uh, it was another uh, very short, meek-looking, very fragile-looking older woman, more like a grandmother, who was... I think in the, in the role once more of a chaperone. But there was one more figure, was once more a tableau of three. 
standing against the wall right next to me was a nun in 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 the type of habit that used to be used when I was in grade school. So there were three people, the trans person, the chaperone, and the nun, the guarding nun. You could say I was targeted by the dark. I'm beginning to get the feeling that I was targeted by some person who's putting together like skits or performances and has something that they want to tell me. But, but the question is, what is that thing that they want to tell me? Because they're not using words. No words were conveyed. Now, in this second instance, as the trans person got up at the end of the service to leave, I saw the trans person direct uh, a slanting look at me that was also full of hatred, full of the desire to injure uh, and I felt that I had to be ready on the spur of the moment to protect my physical body from harm. Fortunately, nothing happened. It was just a look, as in the prior instance. But yet, there was this feeling, this heightened feeling of physical danger directly before me. In my case, because I'm a martial artist, it concerned me because... It, in the pews, the way that people sit in the church, the, they're within the ma. They're, they're too close together to be a safe distance between two physical combatants, two people who are engaged in combat. The trans person had longer arms than me, and so therefore the danger was my own. It could, with a punch, that person could reach me, and I could not reach them. Do you understand? It's invasion of ma is what it's called in the martial arts. Ma is the distance that's safe. It's about a yard apart. And for people who are very good uh, martial artists, it's, it's, it's about five feet apart. So anyway, you know, I have to piece together the situation. Uh, someone told me on the psychic plane that it's a way of expressing something that or does not involve speaking to the person to whom the message is intended to be conveyed. Uh, it could be a way of trying to resolve issues. For instance, it might be classed with creative writing or with writing of poetry or with drawing or painting pictures telling stories as one of the ways that people use to resolve uh, ongoing issues in their lives. It, it could be these people who have been doing these skits are performing them for me on behalf of someone else who has an issue that, that he or she is trying to resolve. And so um, I'm going to give it my best effort here. I feel that there are issues around gender identification that have to do with fear of the opposite sex, fear of intimacy with the opposite sex, and concerns about um, competition, male-male uh, competition, female-female competition, and male-female female-male competition. Okay, so I'm going to try to explain how this feels symbolically to me as a woman. Um, it feels to me that the person who is trans in both of these skits has a feeling of deep hatred towards women, both those people, those two separate people. Uh, from this, I would derive that the person that put together the plays uh, is intending to, to convey that he or she has a deep hatred of women. And also, I would say, because of the number of people set against me, or so it seems, in both of these skits, it's the woman, I, for instance, must be 
conceived of as incredibly powerful as needing three people, two or three people, to prevent harm to the trans person. So what I'm getting is that the originator of the skits must feel hatred of women and also fear of women with the notion that they're, they've got great power, uh, that they're capable of great power and that they need to be subdued by a number of people together. So that's one thing. Then I have the chaperone. In both instances, I have the chaperone. The chaperone seems to me uh, to represent the disrespect that the, the originator of the skits has towards women, that he conceives the role he has with regard, he or she has with regard to women to be to relate to them as a, as a feeble, small, uh, physically ineffectual person who could be easily conquered and killed. That's what I get. It said that in each instance the trans person has so much hatred of women that he could easily injure or kill the chaperone who who is there in some kind of socially acceptable role to prevent, perhaps just as a spoof, to prevent the men in the congregation from raping the trans person or to prevent me from approaching the trans person who may be perceived as being infinitely desirable. I don't know how I'm doing with this. I'm just coming up with this on the fly. You'll have to forgive me. Okay. So then we have, in the second instance, we have the nun. The nun standing in the aisle ready to reprimand me. Let's, first of all, let's, I'd like to make it clear that it's easy to buy these types of regalia online. And so it's possible, I think, that, that spoofs are being performed with religious regalia purchased online maybe being performed by people in the movie industry and that the intention might be to persuade uh, you know the pastors at churches and so forth that that the religious authority the religious establishment is behind the performances that are being given in other words it could be there's false authority there inspired by religious regalia that are purchased and not actually condoned by the religions in question. So, so this is the question. Was the nun, was the nun really a nun or were these, was this habit purchased online? Okay. Can't answer the question. Let's say Let's say that, a, that a, a nun was persuaded to be there under the pretext that say, I'm a very dangerous person, and that the trans person, who's a guy who might have fighting ability for all I know, who seems to hate me, might have displaced or substituted me as the person that does the hating, and that the nun may have become convinced of this and she's standing there to preserve decorum in case I have a, a, a verbal outburst with regard to this person. If I walked into that church with that person's clothes on, what would happen? If I tried to, to walk up and get communion in a Christian church in that outfit, I'm just asking, could I, could I get communion? Yeah. So, so what are the rules with regard to men and women regarding this? You know, is 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 trans so popular that trans can get away with anything? And I and I can't, right? Why is this? So, who really needs protecting in this situation? The women need protecting. I feel there's a great deal of hatred there. Now, let's suppose that the woman who's in the 
religious regalia is actually just an actress. Okay, so she's there, um, and the and the cameras are rolling for the for the religious service, and so she's there to detain me from injuring this person. Okay. And then if I put up a fuss, which would be far from anything I'd ever do, then she would restrain me and they would be, have some skit that they would be performing under the circumstances. So, let's see. Got the trans person, the physical danger to the person, that's me, the physical danger to the chaperone. Then we have, in the second instance, the purported nun. Now, we don't know if this is true or not true. It could be an actor. And keeping in mind that the cameras are rolling for the church service, so it could be an intention to embarrass me in public, but nothing happened. So uh, it could be an intent, if it's just an actor, it could be an intent to deceive me into thinking that the church is behind this performance, that there's true authority there. So, if the authority is needed in order to put on the performance, it must be considered that, like once more, that I'm a very dangerous person as a woman. Something's up there. We have an issue right now with regard to hatred of women. Can I explain it? In this stage production, two women and a trans person are set against one woman, me. Okay, that setting of the two women against another woman it, is a way of expressing female-female competition. It divides the ranks of women so that the trans person can attack the one woman and prevent the one woman from getting solidarity or support from other women. That's one thing. The trans person is also intruding on the male-female prospects of, of the women in the congregation because trans people also look for the romantic intention of male members of the congregation. So the trans person is also in competition with the women in the congregation in a female-female competition way. A trans person who is involved in a sexual encounter with a man who is not trans is, it, if the trans person behaves in the encounter as in a receptive manner, as if he were female, he's I feel expressing a desire not to be hated by men, not to be felt competing with men, a fear of men as well, and a desire to have men love him. I find there are M to M relationships in which men bond. Okay, and there are also M to M encounters in which there's no bonding. And these, these chance encounters, these very quick encounters, are the trouble that, 
that comes up um, in in social relationships, and that is because there's a, a disease called HIV that is being transmitted when when there are lots of partners, many, many partners, maybe as many as 500 partners over the course of a bunch of years, uh, when a person, whether trans or, or simply, um, what's, what is called queer these days, when a person is on the circuit and very sexually active. Um, and so HIV is transmitted by one person to 500 people, let's say, okay? Now suppose this is in a church congregation, okay? So let's say in the trans situation, the trans person is, is, is infecting the men in the congregation with HIV. Let's say these men have wives, okay? And they infect their wives with HIV and the women have children, okay? Children, to whom HIV is passed on by the mother, as I understand it, only live a year or two. Now, considering the scenario where a uh, gay men or trans people are passing on HIV to the entire congregation, I think it would take about a... Uh, let's see, 10 years, for the entire sexually active congregation to be infected. And what will happen then is that there will be no more children in the congregation, no viable offspring. So we have to look for this as a symbol of what is going down in our society as a whole. Uh, unless there is a vaccine that prevents HIV from being fatal to newborns, then in, in the course of the next generation, there will be a dramatic reduction in the number of, of viable births on Earth. And the, um, the population of the planet, the human population of the planet, will greatly decline. Um, this will be good for Earth. I'm sure it won't be the end of life on Earth for humankind, but I think that the numbers of human beings will create a more sustainable planet after that. We have that to look forward to. We also have a need to help um, quell the vigilante efforts and violence on the part of those that feel that certain persons are responsible for um, for what is going to be transpiring, really, through God's will. God's will for, for Earth, you know. So, getting back to this trans issue, I have my own concerns about this trans issue because it's, it's unfolding very slowly right before me through the will of someone, someone who directs these actors and who, who won't talk to me, you know, and who apparently feels that the action of the actors is conveying a message that's patently clear. You know, I don't know what the message is exactly. I, I can only just speak to these various things like the hatred that I feel ex exuding from the trans actors. I don't know why they hate me, you know. I, I don't know if it's me or a lot of different people. Uh, the need for support from from women who will protect the trans person, the possibly the assuming of false authority roles because um, because it's it's hard for me to believe that, that a church would support such a performance on church grounds. I mean, I might be wrong. It might be emanating directly from the authority of these churches. I don't know. Uh, but if it is, I feel that it's through a misunderstanding regarding the need for women to be protected by men and not um, physically assaulted by them, not raped by them, not treated disrespectfully by them, not verbally abused by men, okay? 
None of these are the roles of men with regard to women in a Christian church. I think that's clear. It ought to be clear. But clearing through, we're clearing through this Atlantean knot during during winter solstice and during the holiday season with the coming of the new year. We're coming into a melding of the highest energies of men and women so that in new life, on new earth, men and women can, can support each other and create for earth the, the vision of, of Christ consciousness. We can't do this by putting each other down and warring with each other and competing with each other. You know, we have to do it. We have to achieve a, a mutual respect. What children we may produce who can survive early childhood, we have to nurture them and protect them from that virus, you know, to do our best. I feel there will be children who are resistant to the virus, and if there are not, then there will be pockets of life on Earth where the virus never touches. There will be a new age, you know. So, that's what I'm thinking. I, you know, psychologists will probably read this and they'll think, oh, she's oversensitive, or she, she, she thinks this, she thinks that, but I, what can I say? That's what I think. That's what I feel. You know, if somebody comes up with a silent skid in, in front of you, I don't really know what to say because it, it could be the intent is deadly. It seems like that to me. This is not the only time that very odd skits have been performed in front of me. So there are actors here, there are people here who who aren't good with words, you know. And uh, I think, first of all, preserve your physical safety. That's the very first thing. And if there's a, a setting in which physical violence can be restrained and you can speak to these people and try and find out what's going on, why, so much the better. If not, it, you know, this video may stimulate discussion on the topic because the topic is ever so weird. I'll add w one or two more things just so that, so that you get a, a notion of the scope of the situation. I. I remember a few years ago, I was in Malibu Creek State Park, and standing in front of me, facing away, were a number of people dressed in Franciscan habits, okay? And I got a feeling just then that I was in danger, and this was an acting true. So I went online, and I looked up their particular um, outfits, and it turns out they were available for sale online. So there's no way of knowing whether this was true authority of the Christian church standing in front of me or just actors. And the more so because across the road at the National Park headquarters at King Gillette Ranch, there's a lot of acting troops and, and movie operations going on. You know, the, that lends credence to the notion that it may have been an acting troupe. Okay, so a few years ago, this is another instance. I was walking out of the post office, walking out of my local post office, and in front of me was a young man, kind of tall, maybe six feet or nearly so, and approaching was a trans person who was maybe five feet seven and had on black makeup to make that person look African-American, and who was carrying behind them two baby carriages, old-fashioned baby carriages, on a train of rope or chain. Um, and in one of those was the lap dog. Okay. And this person, this trans person, was dressed um, in a, a kind of a garish outfit, pants dress, and was wearing on their buttocks what looked like um, large-sized um, potato salad containers taped on. And I was afraid to, to
to stay. It was, they were obstructing my path, and I was afraid to stay and talk because the situation was so outlandish to me that I, I couldn't figure any good would come of it, you know? I, that was, that's generally my reaction to these acting skits that keep unfolding in front of me is that, I mean, it seems like there's a madman behind it, you know? <laughs> I mean, maybe there's something cogent there, but it seems to me like soul wounding is unfolding in front of me uh, of a nature too dark and deep for me to fathom. Well, I don't know what to say. Um, usually I do the Buddhist prayer, which is um, God's blessing upon all beings, happiness to all beings. Um, may they all have a roof over their head. May they all have plenty to eat, that kind of thing. And that takes it out of the personal realm and into the infinite. God's will, not my will. May God figure out what this is about because it's completely beyond me. That's all for now. God bless you all and keep you safe and be with you through all your days and may this new year bring forth for you all the wonders of God's creation, all of your ascension gifts, all of your ascension abilities and a chance to be the light for all humankind. Oh, by the way, my website is Awakening with Planet Earth https colon slash slash awakeningwithplanetearth.com Come and see me there. 